please be sure you've watched the first Getting Started video. We'll build on the concepts learned there. In this video, we'll create a more detailed house, learning about accuracy, drawing tips, and using offset in the Follow Me tool. To start this model, let's draw a basic rectangle. As we learned before, everything you draw in SketchUp has real dimensions. We need to control what the dimensions are. In SketchUp, to enter dimensions, you start an operation, then simply type in the desired dimensions. Try this. Undo your rectangle if needed, then start drawing a new rectangle and type 10 apostrophe, comma, 20 apostrophe, and press the Enter key. This creates a rectangle 10 feet by 20 feet. Now start a line from this corner and draw in the red direction. Type 2M and press Enter. This creates a line that is 2 meters long. Working accurately in SketchUp is simple. You just start drawing and then type in the dimensions as needed. Rectangle dimensions are separated by a comma. Here are a few examples of some dimensions you might enter. Now that you are familiar with entering dimensions, erase any existing geometry and draw a new rectangle that is 12 feet by 30 feet. Now starting from this corner, draw another rectangle adjacent to the first that is 20 feet by 10 feet. We can combine these two surfaces by erasing the separating edge. There, now this is one surface that we can push-pull. Start pulling it up and enter 10 feet. To create the roof, we'll use the line tool and draw all the edges we need before pulling the ridge up. Using the line tool, find the midpoint and start drawing back in the green direction. This will be our first ridge and we need it to connect exactly with the second ridge. To do this simply hover, but don't click, on the midpoint here, telling SketchUp we are interested in this inference point. Once you see the tool tip telling you it's the midpoint, follow the original green direction and SketchUp will infer to the new midpoint telling you exactly how far to draw the first edge. Make sure you see both inferences and click to finish the first ridge, then draw the second ridge to this midpoint. Now that we have both ridges in place, simply draw the lines where the roof will fold when we move the ridge lines. Use the select arrow and click on one of the ridges, then hold the shift key and watch the icon. There is now a plus minus that indicates you can add to or subtract from your current selection. This allows you to select other entities and deselect them as well while holding Shift. Add the other ridge line to your selection, making sure only these two edges are selected. Now you can use the Move tool to pull up the roof. When you are happy with your roof, use the Select tool and click away from your model to deselect the ridge lines. Let's explore a new tool, the Offset tool. If you don't see the Large Tool Set, go to the View menu, Tool Palettes, Large Tool Set. This opens the complete tool set in SketchUp. To see how the offset tool works, click on the side of our house and pull inwards or away. All the edges of the surface are offset. Click to finish. You can try this on different surfaces to see the results, or if you wanted to focus on one surface, you could use the select tool to pick a single surface, then the offset tool will only work on that surface. Time to get back to our house. So undo any previous offsets and navigate so we can see under the house. Let's offset the base of the house inwards. Select the bottom surface to focus the offset tool, then offset the base inwards by 6 inches. Push this new surface upwards to create a roof overhang, but don't push it all the way. Leave a few inches for us to work with later. Offset can help us add some quick detail to other elements as well. Use the Rectangle tool to create a door and window. Be sure to start the door from the bottom edge. The window is simple, offset it once or twice, and use Push-Pull to make the window frame. The door is a little more tricky, however. Offsetting the door creates some extra geometry that we don't need. It's easy to erase these extra edges, but there is another way to use offset that will solve this problem for us. Undo back to our simple door. Use the select tool to pick one door edge, then holding the shift key add the other two edges. 
With these edges selected, the offset tool will focus and only work on those edges, so we don't have any problematic edges below our house and can correctly create the door frame. Pull the door frame out so we can use it in our next example. Now that you understand the offset tool, let's move on to the follow me tool. Zoom into the lower corner of the door frame we just created and draw a line between these two edges. We could use push-pull on this new surface, but what if we wanted this to be trim that turns this corner? That is what the Follow Me tool will do. Hit the Escape key to cancel your push-pull or undo it, then select the Follow Me tool and click once on our trim surface. Pull along this lower edge and it looks similar to push-pull until you meet the corner and continue in a different direction. You can pull upwards or around the corner and follow any joining edges then click to finish. The key to follow me is having a continuous edge to follow. Let's undo and navigate so we have a full view of the base of our house. Now use follow me to start following this trim all the way around the house till it meets up with the other side of the door. Just carefully follow along the edges and click to finish when you reach the inside corner of the door. Sometimes it's tricky to end the follow me tool at the right point, but a more sure way to use the tool is to pre-pick the path we want to choose. Undo the follow me action we just finished, and this time use the select tool to choose our path. Hold the shift key down like before, and select all the edges that go around the house, but only the edges and make sure they are all connected or the tool won't work. With our path selected, now choose the follow me tool. It looks like we lost our selection, but don't worry, just click on the trim surface to pull it around the path. If your example doesn't work, try again, and make sure you pick all the edges and have nothing else selected. We are only scratching the surface of what can be done with the Follow Me and other tools, so please look into more of our videos and learning resources to explore these tools to their full extent. To finish our house example, let's turn our attention back to the roof and some drawing aids in SketchUp. Use the Line tool and start drawing a line from this edge. Now hover over the roof edge for a few moments, and as you continue to draw, you'll see a new inference that is purple in color and parallel to the edge we just hovered over. We can easily find out how far to draw this parallel edge by hovering over the ridge point to focus attention there. Then as we come back to drawing our original line, SketchUp will tell us where these points meet up. Click to finish that edge, then continue drawing and hover over the far roof line to tell SketchUp we are now interested in that edge. SketchUp will now show us the parallel inference to that edge and we can follow it down to meet up with the lower on edge inference point. At this point you can keep practicing on your own. In the next video in this series we will create an interior room and fill it with items from the 3D warehouse.